Join ThreatLocker for three days in Orlando, Florida, February 26th through the 28th for our cybersecurity event, Zero Trust World. Cybersecurity strategy stems a lot from warfare. It's a packed schedule with educational sessions that are actually going to help you as an IT professional, such as how to secure Office 365, Windows Server, endpoints, and much more. Pretty cool. It's been really informative. I, did, I actually just went to the Metasploit lab. They were showing us how to use like an SMB exploit, which is pretty cool. Put yourself in the mindset of a cyber criminal with our hands-on hacking labs, where you can learn to write malicious code, use tactics and techniques such as rubber duckies, Wi-Fi pineapples, and understand how cybersecurity tools are bypassed. Hacking labs are amazing and actually uh, seeing how you can do things that will fix the problem. Definitely recommend the event. I mean, the hacking labs are fantastic. Definitely learned a lot. We've also got some really cool speakers, including Mark Rober, Jenny Radcliffe, the people hacker, Dr. Chase Cunningham, and many more of your cybersecurity favorites. Awesome experience and I look forward to coming back again next year. Taking time out of your business to actually work on your business. It was an awesome experience, especially it being our first one. And we learned a lot, we took a lot away. I mean, Zero Trust has been a lot of fun so far. It's been awesome. ThreatLocker knows how to throw a party. My company is all in with ThreatLocker. We think it's an important part of our cybersecurity stack. And the only way we're going to do it is if I mandate that everybody gets certified in the company. So I had to put my money where my mouth is and get it first. Visit ThreatLocker.com to reserve your pass now. Now, I just wanted to point out something because we do have constant back and forth about which is better PCs or Mac. When you plug a rubber ducky that's trying to do data exfiltration into a Mac, three things happen. The first thing that happens is Mac OS pops up and it says, hey, a new device is being connected. Do you want to allow it to connect? So you have to say yes to that. After which it'll say, oh, great, it's a keyboard. What sort of a keyboard is it? So you have to pick a keyboard layout. And the third thing that happens is when curl tries to access or terminal tries to access files in your documents folder, it says, oh, terminal is trying to access files in your documents folder. Do you want to allow it? You have to jump through three hoops in order to get the data exfiltration rubber ducky that works so seamlessly and so quickly on a Windows machine to work on a Mac. Ergo, Macs are better. That is a great starting point, Rob, to our last one. Stand webinar. by all of those statements. All of those statements. So uh, anyone who knows me knows that I, I live to make Rob's life miserable. And Rob kind of made me look a little bit bad because he wasn't wrong when we plugged our rubber ducky into his Mac. So just quick lesson on the rubber ducky, if anyone doesn't know what one is. Rubber ducky here is a little USB device. It is not a USB storage device, so it will be not be blocked by your storage USB policies. It is a keyboard that's pre-programmed to type keys at a thousand words per minute. So we love this device because we can plug it in, set up reverse shell, Xfil data, do all sorts of cool things on a computer as if we were sitting at it. And it comes in two formats, this one and an OMG cable, which is even cooler. We'll talk about that on another webinar or at Zero Trust World. However, when I plugged my rubber ducky into my Windows machine that was pre-configured to use PowerShell to export all my data, it worked really, really well. When we plugged it into Rob's or um, Victor MacBook here, it did ask us to say, approve it as a keyboard. It did allow us to steal the data, but we did have to say, yes, I trust it. And my argument was users do things, they click allow, they trust. Anyway, Rob was saying, as we can hear, Macs are better. So I want to rerun this, Rob, because I, I think- by that. I stand by that assessment. Okay, so we want to run this because I think fair is fair. Um, he he did manage to block my rubber ducky from automatically doing damage last time. Uh, of course, we don't have PowerShell on the Mac, so we have to use something different. Last time we used curl, which Mac told us wasn't able, able to access a file. So I've got a clean Mac here. I say clean, it took us about four hours to install Zoom on it because apparently sharing a screen on a Mac in Zoom requires admin credentials for some reason. Uh, because security, Danny, because security. So, okay, the IT guy loves that, that he has to go and help you know, put his password into the user can see on the screen. So we have a Mac here, a clean Mac, a clean plus Zoom. And on the Mac, we have um, uh, right here, and I show it here, and I'm going to switch. And this is going to be the hardest part of this webinar, because here's the thing. I need to switch to this device, which means I need to turn the audio off my device and turn it on on this device. Hopefully it works. Uh, and then I'm going to share my screen on here. I'm going to show you some cool stuff. Okay, my rerun of Rubber Ducky. Let's mute on here.
just like to say this would be a lot more seamless if you was using on mic. mute i'm going to turn up my speaker rob can you hear me yes i can okay so i now have my mac here in front of me we've changed no system settings on the mac just to be clear and I have my rubber ducky pre-configured with the map. I am going to take all the credit for these because if it wasn't for me hiring the cool cybersecurity experts, we wouldn't have been able to do this. I did not write this script myself, however. Um, share your screen, Danny. Oh, I've got to share the Mac screen. So let me do this, uh, share screen. I'm going to share a Mac screen here. So can we see the screen there? It looks like we can see the screen. It no. looks beautiful, Danny. I'm not gonna lie, that is an awesome looking background. Okay, and the new rubber duckies come with USB-C and USB-A, which is useful because this Mac does not have USB-A. So I'm going to plug my rubber ducky in using USB-C, and I'm going to hope I don't break it. Oh, let me just do something. So I'm going to stop sharing and reshare for a second because I just realized I may have done something wrong. Uh, share screen again. Oh, no, I did it right. I just thought I forgot to. Okay. You see the screen? Looks beautiful. I'm going to plug yeah. in my rubber ducky and no hands hands are fully in front of the camera and we put this in really slow motion so i can enjoy it you can see it's open terminal without asking me what keyboard it was and in terminal it's now running scp which is going to be used to connect to a kali linux machine um somewhere where ivan has it and the kali linux machine requires a password because hackers are really good at putting passwords on their computers um, whereas my google chrome one did not uh, so we're going to wait for that password to be entered in slow motion, hopefully. And what should happen, although I'm feeling nervous that it's not going to work, is we should see our files start uploading to the internet. We're going to get Ivan to show you those files. It's now uploaded those files. So quickly on a Windows machine to oh. work on a Mac. Ergo, Macs are better. Macs are better. Macs are better. Macs are better. <laughs> I couldn't help but finish that video, Rob. Don't we think that's a nice video? <laughs> yes, that's a beautiful video, Danny. So just to recap what we've done is we have taken all of the files off this Mac and we've uploaded them onto a computer on the internet using a rubber ducky without having to configure the keyboard. And you know, all we did different was change the serial number, change a bunch of parameters on the rubber ducky so the Mac thought it was a keyboard to begin with. Ivan, do you want to be so kind? I'm going to stop sharing, switch back to my other audio. Um, so stop sharing here, switch back to, yep. So the beautiful thing is it actually worked. It actually grabbed the files from Danny's victim Mac. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. I'll share it. And we're going to go over to the right side, which is going to have the files on the right hand section. We could see invoices, CXT, password for servers, images of keys.jpg. So we have all those files exfiltrated and sent up to our C2 server that's hosted on the cloud. But let's go ahead and see these files. If we navigate towards the left, towards directory listing, we're gonna go ahead and refresh this page. What I love here, Ivan, is you've got passwords for a server in a text file. You know why that was possible? Because the user thought that was using the Mac thought it was so secure, he could do that. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Let me go ahead and refresh this page and share my screen again. There we are, share screen. By the way, if this doesn't work, Ivan, we're changing your light from red to pink. <laughs> it definitely worked. We can see the files are here. And if we click invoices.txe, I didn't actually put anything in there, but we would be able to see the contents of the file. Rob's notes. We have ZTW 2020, 2024 prep txt. So all those files that were in Rob's or the victim Mac, it's documents folder. They were on my Mac. C2 server. Yeah. So Very on that mic, Rob, I feel really bad. But we've and been so you should. And so you I feel, should. I feel really bad that I've, I've utilized probably a week of the Threat Locker Op team's resources in order to prove a point that we can use a rubber ducky on the Mac. So I've, I've got a gift for you that I'm going to bring into you here. I've bought you a brand new oh. AirPod Pro, the same type we give away at the trade. So just give me one second. I'm going to give That's you this. Gift. Remarkably and unusually kind of you, Danny. So like, I'm going to give Rob this gift to say sorry with all of them. Why don't you, you change your audio to this gift? But now much you love things with Apple logo on. I'm impressed. I'm starting to become slightly suspicious because it doesn't have the Apple wrapping, Danny. And we always oh, does have the Apple wrapping. Damn it. 
Okay. It's got an Apple logo on it. If it was a turd in a box, you'd still love it, Rob. I, I know. still love it. It does have the look. I was wrong. It does have the wrapping, so I'm no longer suspicious. Um, okay. Okay. Why, totally why, don't you pair up your, why don't you pair up your new, brand new Apple headset for me to your like, Mac, by the way? If you'd like me to share my screen, or, or, to, my... or to your test Mac, should we say? So let's square your team and pair it up because I want to see how this, how good these. I mean, you told me these, he, these what eight hundred dollar headsets are beautiful. They are beautiful. They truly are. Yeah. Jeez, you got a lot of TVs, Rob. <laughs> They're not all my TVs. <laughs> what else? I turn them on, I suppose. And Rob knows something's coming his way. He's not stupid. White really isn't my color. Okay, I'll take them back if you don't like them. How's the sound? Oh, what's happening, Rob? <laughs> uh, that doesn't look normal. What are you doing? That does not look normal. Okay, so maybe <laughs> a little bit of an explanation here. Rob just connected his um, Bluetooth. Sorry, no, hang on a second. I said, Rob just connected your very suspicious gift to his Mac. And, and I, I, I think, and we like to do the images here, but I think we might have a reverse shell onto your machine. Ivan, is that accurate? Yep, that is 100% accurate. We have a fully interactive reverse shell onto Prove Rob's it. Damn you. Okay, prove I will it. prove it. Let me go ahead and share my. Open up his browser or something. Let's go ahead and do that. I do like the image, Ivan. I Did you make that yourself? It is. Is it Sorry? a penguin? Is it a penguin? A parrot? It's a parrot. Yes, it is a dancing oh, parrot. Good. A very happy dancing parrot. Oh. <gasps> oh, why is your internet history on Tinder? <laughs> <laughs> so that's very naughty, Rob. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do want to point out, Rob. Like there's children who might be watching. <laughs> yeah. So, so I want to I want to explain how we did that. Um, and this is a, an issue that Apple is aware of. We were able because I this is the same headset we give away, but because we were able to, we had this Bluetooth headset. We we're able to give this Bluetooth headset away, and we knew the MAC address of it, and we programmed it to basically intercept, we were able to intercept the Bluetooth connection using a flipper device, which I'm going to get from someone. I'm going to ask Sam if she can go and grab me a flipper device uh, from somewhere. Actually, we'll get it afterwards to show you. But the um, basically is a Swiss army knife of tools. And one of the features it has is able to scan and tap into Bluetooth. I'm going to get Ivan to show you what that looks like um, first. Oh, look, Rob's got one in his, pack, in his pocket. So you knew better, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I should have. So, uh, now, can I just say that's all very well and good? You had, uh, let's just call them a poison set of headphones. What about if I use my own ones? Go for it, Rob. Can I close the parrot? Is that yes, okay? Yes, you may close the parrot. Uh, close the parrot. Oh, does that kill our reverse it. shell if he closes the parrot? It, it, it does kill our reverse shell. Okay, so okay. close the parrot. Well, we leave the parrot and you just finish doing whatever it is you're doing to me and then I'll use my own headphones. No, just use your headset. I think, we, I think we've embarrassed you enough, Rob. Your face is getting redder and redder, brother. <laughs> I we can, so and Ivan, I just want to check. We've got no cheat going on here. You've lost. This is this is your headset. Yeah, I've, Rob. I've totally lost connection to the to Rob's machine. Okay. Did you right. trust the guy with the hoodie in a red room? I don't think he should. But okay, so this. Great. I, I just Rob, have we had access to your headset? Have you had access to my headset? No, you haven't. Okay, just checking. If you had, I would have been very suspicious. It's a nicer color, I think. It is definitely a nicer color. That's not my one. Hang on a second. I need. I think I need the. I didn't even know they came in black. Put these away. Black is the only true color. You're not wrong. Sorry. Space gray, Ivan. Space, space gray. gray. Yes. Titanium from space. Are we gonna have a go and assume it might be AirPods Max? Because I do have the other ones put away. So let's let's see if they're AirPods Max. Because when you put them away, is the power off on those AirPods? Um, yes, because Apple's wonderful design, basically, once you close this and it's properly put away, it's asleep. Okay, so I, I'm so I, I want to point out here. So you, you you've got a set of headphones which only function is to play music and to listen to your microphone. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm I'm just wondering how it is 
that we were able to send keystrokes to your computer through your Bluetooth connection to your headphones. Your headphones. Uh, your headphones, Ralph. <laughs> so, <laughs> just okay. as planned, Rob. Just as planned. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> Ivan, do you want to explain? Have you got one of those? We filed my headphones. I, no, we I did not defile your headphones. Way, no, we yeah. did not. No, we did not define your headphones. We haven't had access to your headphones. They are your headphones. And by the way, we are not sharing anything. This is a known vulnerability from Apple that Apple is aware about that they haven't decided to fix because they don't feel it's important. Where, Ivan, maybe you can explain this. You can intercept the Bluetooth. Uh, when you put your device in pairing mode, you can see the, the MAC address. So once you pair your computer, we can listen to all MAC addresses of all Bluetooth for iOS being paired. And then once we know your MAC address, we can intercept any connection to any Apple uh, to your device and not only intercept it, but use it as a keyboard connection. So Ivan has just obviously exploited that. Maybe Ivan, you can show us what's going on in the background. So here I'm sharing our listener, which is our Opsi2 framework. And we're just, like I said, listening for that connection. Once Rob's machine sends out that connection, we receive it, we intercept it. And now we have control over his terminal. The beautiful thing is what happens on this little device right here. This is so called- I, I want to clarify, you are connected to what? You are you, That public address is your, is your server. That This is our C2 server, correct? Okay, this is your C2 server, yes. Okay, so you're connected to, this is the reverse shell though. This is the reverse shell, yes. But this, this side of things, the C2 server, all it's doing is just listening for that connection that Rob is sending out from his machine through his terminal. Okay, so how did we get this far where we were able to, because obviously we went into, essentially if Robert opened up a keyboard, he typed in the commands that the, the headset typed in essentially, he, he connected using bash uh, to your- Correct, yeah. yes, through Z shell, well, yes. ZSH, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. so, so how, how, did, how did you get onto his headset to begin with? So that's where the flipper zero comes in and Bluetooth sniffing. So we actually have a module on this beautiful thing right here. We attach this headpiece, which one of my amazing teammates made, Rayton. He made this headpiece that actually scans. It's an ESP32 board and it scans both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So it has Wi-Fi Bluetooth capabilities. So we can sniff the, the network. It's a very long range attack. We can sniff the network around and grab the MAC addresses of the devices that are on pairing mode or listening at that moment. And what we do is we replicate it. And the beautiful thing is we, we get the exact names of those devices. So we know exactly what we're attaching to. So then what we do is we launch a bad KB or bad Bluetooth attack, which is essentially a wireless rubber ducky attack. But what we do is we uh, spoof this device to make it look as if it's Rob's headset. So we attach the exact same MAC address onto this device, the exact same MAC address that Rob has on his device. And we actually notice that the more flippers there are, the higher the probabilities are of contact. So the moment he hits that connect button, if we have two or more flippers, we have almost 100% chance of relaying all the data back onto that machine and launching our uh, malicious payloads. So two flippers better than one flipper. I have a question. Two flippers are better than one, yes. Headphones don't type. Headphones do not type. That's the beautiful thing about it. We can connect to almost any, not almost any, every single Bluetooth device and make it look as if it was a keyboard just due to the fact that we're intercepting that connection. Hmm. And actually, actually, I think I could show it here. Do you guys see my screen? I should be sharing it. I do have another we, we can see. Have we tested this on Windows? I think we have, yes. We have tested this on Windows. And does it work on Windows? It does work on Windows. Oh, Interesting. But, so but what were you saying, Ivan, about it being more difficult on Windows? So I, I will say, say it, Anthony, it, please, if you don't mind, Ivan, did you say this also works on Windows? It, it does work on Windows. It is a bit more difficult. That's to really Bluetooth. interesting. Just due to the fact I... that Apple has, I will give credit to Apple where it's due. It has amazing Bluetooth capabilities. All you have to do is hit connect and it's paired instantly. With uh, Windows, you do have that authentication where it's going to ask for that code and it's going to pair the two devices. But here I have a program called QFlipper. And if we click it, this is how we sniff for Bluetooth. So if I, I hit send, you see all the Bluetooth addresses coming through. That's what a sniffing attack looks like for Bluetooth devices. So there I'm relaying, I'm grabbing all those MAC addresses. And the beautiful thing is I can get it saved onto a log and then I can analyze the log and decipher exactly what device is which MAC address. And then that allowed us to find uh, Rob's MAC address and then copy it and then thus launch the attack on his I machine. I didn't know we had a frame TV in the building, Danny. 
I think we do. I didn't know I we saw, had a frame. I saw the word frame there. Yes, I, I believe we do have. Oh, a no, frame. I've got two here up here. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's Thanks. that's also that also shows the strength of this attack. I'm on the other side of the building, and I can sniff the devices that are on the other side. Yeah, what are you? Three hundred feet away from me? About three hundred feet. Yes. So, so here's what's important. So you have a reverse shell, which means you can run anything you want on Rob's computer right now. And the way we're able to get that reverse shell is um, using software on Rob's computer to connect to our to your server. And now you can you can install software, you can run software, you can encrypt files, you can upload files, you can do whatever you want. Is that accurate? That is accurate. Yes. Uh, any, anything that Rob would be able to do himself, you can do on the machine. Yes. Okay. So we're actually not here to 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 show how unsecure Macs are. However, I do hope that we've we've enlightened people a little bit. Macs, PCs, they are computers that open operating systems. The design of those devices is so you can run software, any software you want, actually. You can develop software, you can create new products, and it makes them a really, really valuable business device. However, um, in this case, we're able to intercept access to that device. So if someone's pairing a keyboard, if someone's pairing a headset, if someone's pairing anything, we're able to intercept that connection. We don't need a pin because Apple has a really, really good um headset and uh it's very very easy to connect without a pin uh, so what we'd like to do now though is give you some tips on how you should secure your mac it's worth noting before we begin threat locker has um ha is launching this week into beta uh, ring fencing for Macs. because what we realize here is that you can weaponize existing tools in none of these cases we actually ran an executable so ring fencing is a solution if your application cannot go out to the internet if it cannot get access to a reverse shell it cannot access your files then it cannot steal your files and you have to assume that someone's going to get on your machine whether it's because you forgot to lock it whether it's because they plug in a rubber ducky or whether it's because you got gifted a really nice headset or didn't get gifted a really nice headset um you have to assume that someone can get on your machine or a user just open something uh, so what Rob wants to do is give you some tips on how you can secure your Mac. So Rob, over to you. Tell us some tips. Um, tell you some tips. Uh, well, obviously, use ring fencing when it's available. As you said, it would have basically stopped this, well, stopped this attack in its tracks pretty much. Um, we do talk about reverse shells on these uh, webinars quite a lot, and it's because they're so powerful and because they're so hard to stop. Um, but look, ring fencing uh, would have pretty much stopped this in its track because he could just say, set a sage, don't let it access the internet, problem solved. But aside from that, probably one of the biggest problems uh, security wise with, I suppose, with software in general, but Max equally is using not legitimate software. Um, so to summarize it very quickly, cracked no or cracked software no. As an Irish person, I should want to say crack, as in C-R-A-I-C, that's okay. Just no crack. So use legitimate software. It's really tempting to download software from free from, for free from some dodgy place on the internet. You are going to get malware. Okay, so that's probably the best advice I can give anyone. I mean, look, MDM, if possible, uh, use MDM. Again, just restrict what software can be run on the machine. Um, try to stick to the App Store if you possibly can. Uh, it's at least vetted by somebody which is in this case, Apple. So if you can download the majority of your software through the app store, that would be preferable. Um, firewall, I, I'm pretty sure, and I haven't tested this recently, but I'm pretty sure uh, Firewall isn't enabled by default when you install a new Mac. Now, I will say there's a reason that I'm not quite sure about that. And the reason I'm not quite sure about that is I've been using Mac for 15 years and I never have to reinstall. I have had probably 50 new Macs in that time, and I just use Migration Assistant. I get my new machine set up, and I don't need to worry about anything. Now, that might be why the firewall not turned on. Well, you've been, been using a Mac. You have to buy a new Mac every year, Rob, did you just say? Yes. There you go. <laughs> yes. Listen, I don't get the title of resident fanboy for buying one every five years. <laughs> every single year, I need a new one. I did manage two years um, once, but I didn't enjoy that experience at all. Um, so yeah, as I said, firewall, enable it, make sure it's enabled. If it look, if it can be done centrally, we are, uh, in the process. And I know Danny mentioned ring fencing for Mac network control for Mac is coming as well. So centrally managed firewall is obviously preferable to a user management firewall, but just make sure the firewall is turned on. Uh, uh, so I want to, I want to address that because someone's made a comment. Um, you know, obviously the Mac agent has been pretty new to threat locker. And uh, I assume it's a comment or another thing. If, if 
felt like it worked actually worked well on the Mac. Maybe this would be right. Um, the, we have had problems with the Mac. However, if you do try the latest builds, they are a hundred thousand times better. Um, so we did appoint a new uh, chief of our Mac department, and they've done wondrous jobs at uh, making things work a lot better, a lot faster and a lot more efficient and we are committed to making sure Macs are as secure as windows running threat locker and the only way that is done through is through allow listing through ring fencing and through hardening your environment but you know please don't if you've if you feel like you've had a bad experience in the past if you tried threat locker in 2017 in windows you would have had a bad experience in that too it writing security software comes with challenges and every piece we have to think about every possible conflict every possible scenario and unfortunately you can't test every piece of software in the world with your software however if you use windows recently you know how great the product is and if you use mac you know how, how great it's got as well so please don't give up just because you tried it a year ago when it was first released it is substantially better now if you want to try uh, mac for threat locker I mean, look, the, the the other things are really things that apply to all operating systems. So patching, just make sure your machines are kept up to date. I see so many instances, so many people, they're running, you know, year old operating systems or when updates are available, they just can't find the time to do it. It doesn't take long. A new Mac takes two, three, four, five minutes tops to install even a major operating system update. Just make sure your stuff is up to date. Um, and said, basically just, what was that? And your phone. What about my phone? What make, sure your phone, phone? make sure your phone. Make sure No, don't worry. No, don't, <laughs> don't scare him now, Danny. <laughs> You'll find out later. Um, uh, yeah. So um, <laughs> make sure. Uh, and, and I say this genuinely: the iPhone is the Mac's biggest companion, and if your phone is not up to date, then you may have a problem. When my son was eleven, he actually has a CVE at the age of eleven for finding a vulnerability in the phone where the little git stole my wife's password for, through a vulnerability uh, in the Mac. Where can, can, we, look, can we just, I want to give Ryan full credit from this. Can we just explain how brilliant it was? No, so tell, what he, just tell the people what the child did. So what he did is he found a way that you can turn the screen recorder on without actually showing that the screen was being recorded. So when the password was being entered uh, and he my my wife, uh, who's also the CEO of Threat Locker, so she should be embarrassed with herself that she got conned by an 11 year old. And she's also staring at me from the other side of the room like I'm, I'm in serious trouble. Um, but she, she she said, Ryan's great. He never asks for more screen time. And I was like, hmm. And anyway, what he'd done is one day he said, can I get 15 more minutes? She entered her password while the screen was being recorded and he captured her password. Apple did patch it and they did... Uh, send us, you know, he, he was listed in the CV, so it was, it, but, and I didn't know whether to be proud of him or mad at him at the time, so one or the other, but the the iPhone... You can be both things at once, Danny. You don't have um, to decide. You can be both proud and mad. Single core, man, single core. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but the point being is this device is paired to your Mac and it's your Mac's best friend. You can send text messages to an iPhone, which will also open on a Mac, another way of unfiltered tra traffic getting into your environment. So make sure this is patched as well as your Mac. And if you have any kind of, whether you're using Duo or any kind of dual factor or MDM, make sure your staff and your users are patching their phones because the amount of vulnerabilities on the iPhone are horrendous. And if they're attached to your Mac, that becomes a proxy to your Mac, which then becomes a proxy to your network and everything else in the building. So make sure your phone is patched as well. Uh, somebody's asked, by the way, we, we, I asked this question 10 minutes before, does the same attack work on the iPhone? And that is our next to-do list uh, for Ivan and the team because we didn't actually test it. And we are getting nowhere near my iPhone, my friend. <laughs> Can we the last time, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I'm just going to go through a couple of questions. Uh, uh, Rowan Clegg said that this is the best webinar they've been in. Uh, honestly, guys, if you do join our series, sometimes they're more interesting than others. Normally when Rob loses, they're more interesting, but please do come back for our webinars. But also if you like the webinar, come to Zero Trust World. It is three days of this shit hands-on and we're getting you guys to do it as well. We've got the keyboards, we've got the labs, we've got the hands-on stuff. And it's not just hacking, it's also how to secure, but it really is a good three days. And we're going to give some coupons at the end of this to get some discounts on the ticket as well. Um, when do you think uh, the Mac will have parity with Windows? Um, and will Config Manager work with a Mac? 
Um, so Ring Fencing is going to be released within the next week on the Mac. So ho hopefully if nothing else uh, goes wrong, um, that brings it the closest to parity with Windows. Network control um, technically is there, but we've turned it off until we can confirm stability on network control. Um, and that leaves us down to elevation. No, elevation's done. Storage is done. Um, tell me where I'm wrong, Rob. Our is listing is done. Um, where configuration manager, I don't know if it's ever going to be on the Mac because I don't know if we can configure things on a Mac from a third-party agent. We have to uh, we have to figure that out. But the other features in Windows, the security features of Threat Locker Protect should be in parity, well, as soon as network control, and um, which is imminent, and ring fencing are released. Um, so hopefully very it's going to continue to be better one thing i will say is we cannot protect the kernel on the mac so we can protect you from this we can protect you from applications doing harm we can protect you from untrusted software but unlike windows you cannot run as a driver um which is either a security feature or flaw we'll, we'll debate that another day rob <laughs> um sure. microsoft strategy is you we have to send our code to microsoft to review apples is no we're not letting you um so we will never be able to protect from kernel level threats on a Mac because the way that the Mac works with antivirus. Uh, well, just on that point, the fact that we can run the kernel, it is a pain in the ass, but realistically, it is a feature, not a bug. Um, and look, everybody's in the same boat on a Mac. Uh, one would hope, with the exception of Bluetooth, that Apple do a reasonably good job in their own security, so shouldn't be necessary. Any other suggestions for security on the Mac? I mean, don't take any gifts from Danny. It's probably pretty high up on that list now. We give away a lot of Apple headsets at trade shows. We do actually give away a lot of <laughs> Apple headsets. We do. And if anybody's on this webinar who has got a headset from us at a trade show, they're probably quite worried right now, but don't be. Unless Ivan was there, you, you, you should be good. Um, so that's the question. How, how good are we with Mac new OS releases? I mean, given the fact we've only had the stable version released for a year, the, uh, it, it's hard to say. However, the last release we did update very fast. As soon as the beta comes out, our app teams start testing it. So the latest stable releases, we would hope that we can keep up with Apple. Um, however, sometimes Apple changes things on the 11th hour uh, and the beta does not match the live. Uh, Apple is not like Windows. It's a lot harder. Every time they release a new version, we have to release a new version. We can't just use the current version. Another reason Windows is better. But um, <laughs> however, we we do test it the moment Apple release it in beta. We are testing it and making sure it works. Uh, so and we're our, our goal is to always be ahead of Apple um, when they release a new version. If we can post in the uh, the chat as well, if we don't mind, Martin, there should be a chat with a coupon code coming in. So we get two hundred dollars off if you did not win a free ticket today. You can get two hundred dollars off. It's in the chat there. You can click on that. Um, you will get a copy of the webinar sent to your email as well. So if you want to share it to your clients, you can do. Uh, that's not a problem. It shows how easy it is to bypass uh, security. If you do come to Zero Trust World and you pass your cyber hero test, so big, big, big warning here, so don't say I didn't tell you. Even if you've been using Threat Locker for five years, if you do not study, you will not pass this because I guarantee you're not using all of the components and all of the features of Threat Locker. But if you come to Zero Trust World and you pass your cyber hero test on site, we will refund your ticket for zero trust well for you so you it's 300 dollars at the moment but we will refund that 300 dollars on site if you pass the test however i really really recommend you go through throughout Locker university before coming to zero trust world because the party is going to be cool and what we don't want to see is you guys in the hotel room studying because you failed on the first day and you're trying to retake it's really it on hard to study with a hangover yeah, it's really hard. So, so I recommend that you do study beforehand. But if you want to get a refund of your ticket, you could do it just by taking that test. We every year the, the failure rate unfortunately is about seventy percent. Not because the test is too hard, although it's not easy, but because most people think I've been using Threat Locker, I know how to do it. I'm going to pass the test. Um, so you know, book book a li link there and join us at Zero Trust World. Uh, I we may be running out of tickets soon, so do get your ticket sooner rather than later. Um, uh, sorry, just a quick one, Danny. August Nelson has asked what module in the university is the best to study from. I think it's the Cyber Hero track. Yeah, and if, if it's not clear, uh, just drop into support or drop to even if, you, if you're not. They'll tell you. They'll confirm August. Yeah, we will be showing you how to use the flipper at Zero Trust World. So please come with your headsets ready to steal data <laughs> so, uh, so um make sure you pair on site maybe maybe yeah maybe don't bring the headsets guys look forward to seeing everyone at zero trust world rob any final parting thoughts no um i'm, I'm keeping these by the way you're not getting these back 
you can keep them. <laughs> <laughs> Please keep them. You can use them on your personal machine, Rob. I will. Sorry, the uh, learning plan is a certified cyber hero learning plan in the university. Okay. Cool. So, guys, um, thank you very much. Thank you, Ivan. And uh, thank you for everyone in the background who made this work because I took most of the credit. But the reality is that this time I delegated nearly everything, well including done, getting Zoom working on a Mac. <laughs> that was the hardest part. All right, everyone. Thank you very much. Macs are better. Macs are better. Macs are better. Macs are better. Macs are better.